how's Dina's game doing? Because I know you're watching that one too. Uh... I just beat a GM in 30 moves. I wish Dina was my student. Well, technically it was 31. But the point is, I just beat a Grandmaster in the round four of Reykjavik Open 2023 in Iceland. I sacrificed a bishop, a knight, and a rook, and checkmated him. Well, he actually resigned one move before the checkmate and asked for mercy not to be shown on the camera. But in any way, let me show you how the game went. No, this is not April Fool's Day joke. I just beat the Grandmaster in 30 moves. Wanna see? Let's go. I'm playing white pieces against Greg Gachevsky, former 26 plus club member, as well as second officiant. The game started with e4, my basic setup, c5, knight of 3, e6. So far, I knew my opponent was gonna go here, so I prepared knight c3, the move that I played already before, but still, um, there are many options for white here, so I didn't have to repeat, you know, the same stuff. a6, I decided to respond with g3, which is also a setup that I usually play, here trying to provoke b5 and b5 i do consider bit edgy for black because you know i mean already you can see that black only moved their pawns and not any piece developed which is kind of worry but also due to some concrete reasons black could actually get themselves here in trouble bishop g2 bishop b7 d4 very important to do d4 now and not after short castle because if you do short castle then they just go b4 and take the pawn then white is just worse so d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, b4 now, knight a4, and knight f6. Before we dive here, let me explain you a little detail. b4 is one of the most principal approaches for black, but black doesn't have to go for b4. If black doesn't do that, and they develop simply something like knight c6, knight f6, then white just castles, plays rook e1, and then my favorite knight d5. I already missed an opportunity to beat a grandmaster before with this idea in 95. I believe it was a Grandmaster Nana Zagnidze in the last year's Women's European Championship in Prague that I played in August 2022, where I could have this idea of 95 and in many other ideas sacrificing the knight. So when this line appeared in my game today, I was like, yeah, baby, this is exactly where I want to take you. C takes d4, knight takes d4, b4. Again, the most principal approach for black and probably the only one that equalizes. Knight a4, knight f6, short castle. Interesting thing, now quickly the first suggestion of my engine is c4 saying that white is better. I have no idea and in any case I'm not gonna discuss such a important uh, opening secrets with uh, my YouTube community, if you see what I mean. I am still a professional chess player, apart from the fact that now I'm a professional blogger, streamer, YouTuber, whatever you call me, content creator. Yeah, that that's how it goes. So the point is, short castle, no secrets, not today, not in this video. Bishop takes e4, the principal way, taking the pawn. And yes, I did not blunder the pawn. I knew it was a sack and I knew why it was a k. Bishop takes e4, knight takes e4. And here I have a choice. Do I go with rook e1? But then after d5, I didn't see anything like whatsoever to do here. So I wasn't sure. I was like, I know that the good move, one of the good moves is c4. So I decided to go for it. My idea was that after b takes c3, knight takes c3, knight takes c3, pawn takes c3 and yes there is a pawn but i for black but i do have a compensation here with some really nice ideas and development and black is still i mean come on look at black every single piece of black is on the eighth isn't that sad it's very depressing so my opponent played bishop e7 exactly for that reason trying to develop but here goes rookie one and now question Darling, what are you going to do with your knight? The best would have been to play knight c5. But my opponent went for f5. And f5 is already a little bit edgy. Here, computer gives advantage for white after bishop f4, short castle, and knight takes f5. The exact same idea that I had in the game, you will see later on. If e takes, then just double attack and winning the exchange. If rook takes, then we just gain back the pawn and our pieces are really nice and we got the center. Well, knight c6, probably the best, but still white is better here. My mind was way too simple. I was like, opponent has a piece in my camp. I don't like that. I want to chase this piece. So f3, go away. If there is a stranger in your house, let's say a robber, you don't want him stay. You want to kick him out. So this is what I did. F3. Knight goes back to F6. Here the best would probably be knight C5. 
and not in the previous position, but here, knight c5. But again, knight f5, knight a4, some crazy lines, knight takes c7, queen a7, queen a4, and white is obviously better because we're better in the development. We're better in the center, the position is open, and we got a bishop against the knight. So knight f6, bishop g5, the most logical move. I really love this idea because now I do force my opponent to solve some practical problems. How does black gonna castle? Tell me. If you just do it right away, then there is knight f5. Remember I told you knight f5, just as an idea I had in the game. And after e takes f5, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, and queen d5! Hello, girl! How are you doing? What's up with your rook? Feeling comfortable? King in shade and boom. That's why black cannot castle. Practical problem. What to do? My opponent played this very edgy and the first kind of like, uh-oh, king f7 move. I do understand it. I actually was so surprised that I spent like 20 minutes here trying to understand should I sack or not. And luckily, I was able to calculate properly. I should not sacrifice because if I do knight f5, e takes f5, bishop takes f6, with the idea if bishop takes f6, then you know already what happens, right? You do not need to post the video to find that queen d5 correct. But here comes king takes f6, brilliant move. And why it just has like... Look at this position, this is so cynical. The king of black is like the piece which is the, fur the farthest advanced, the, 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 you got me, the longest, the highest advanced in the position. And I mean, I just resign. I, I don't want to find that, that word. You, you will tell me in the comments. So the king is like the strongest, yeah? And still absolutely no way to, to use it because of queen d4, I'm obviously trying to hope for king f7 and just queen d5 and double attack. Yeah, but here comes king g6, another brilliant move. And after queen d5, there's just knight c6. There's absolutely no way for white to, to do whatsoever. So yeah, I think this is actually what my opponent was trying to provoke me. But I was better than that. I could calculate. Well, one thing I wasn't great about is that Simply after bishop takes f6, now bishop takes f6, knight takes f6 is the line that I was expecting like to do for the first time, but then rook f8, and I thought like, okay, I do knight d6, king g8, okay, I got my perfect knight, but still black will be able to develop, I'm not sure there is any advantage here. Unfortunately, the advantage was big here for white, but I didn't, I didn't feel it. I was like, this is not enough, I don't want to let my opponent develop, and that's why I came up with this very particular, very interesting move queen e2. One can think that I threaten knight x6, d takes x6 and queen x6 but I actually do not yet threaten that. Although what I do have as an idea of this move is that I block the knight. The knight cannot enter anywhere in the game. Like knight x6, just knight x6, d takes x6 and queen e6. And my next move is gonna be rook d1. And it's not so clear what to do here for black. Probably the best would be just to play something like rook e8 and then rook d1. And the only move here would be queen a5. I would just go with a chill b3, protecting the knight, maybe h6, but bishop f4, and then we just play. Okay, but white is better here. King g8, king g2, something like bishop f8, bishop e5. Okay, this is some, some analysis that I came up after the game, just trying to make sense for black because the move that black did in the game is just crazy it's absolutely insane like i got messages by my friends saying like tell me the drugs that your opponent was after this game i mean i didn't say that forgive me hi please consider taking a second and clicking the button down below subscribe it means the world to us and besides it's completely free king g6 yeah king g6 is crazy but I do understand the idea behind it. You know, sometimes when you play against low-rated opponents, and I think you actually know that already. Those of you who watched the recap of the of the of the day two of Reykjavik Open, you know that sometimes when you play a lower-rated opponent, something like 300 rated difference is actually the same that I had in the previous game that you saw. I hope you saw. Yeah, you kind of take risks. And here I think black was trying to scare me, attacking my bishop, hoping that I would take the knight and then it just bishop takes and black is fine. Black is totally fine here after rook a d1 and queen c7. But I was better than that. I was like, no way you're gonna take my bishop. This is impossible. Your king is not gonna go before everybody. So here we go. Boom, g4. First brilliant move. Fortina Belenkaya here. King g5. Oh my god, what is he doing? I was like, no freaking way. Okay, Dina, calm down. Breathe. 
you are about to hunt GM's king. Let's go. The most logical, G takes f5. King h6, again, no idea what to do. Let's go for the most logical. F takes c6. Queen a5. Funny enough, I was expecting this move. The idea is that if I go for checks, let's say queen a3 or queen d2, then just queen g5, and then with a piece up, black would actually force the queen trade. We don't want that. Another idea behind queen a5 is to stop me from doing my very monstrous and very strong check on f 5 with a knight. And you know what? Another brilliant move played by Dina Belenkaya, which came to my head like right away, like seriously, like the first thing c5 boom second brilliant move in this game there is a beautiful tactic here it's not very complicated but if bishop takes c5 then just queen e3 and now king g6 queen d3 was my thought and if like obviously black has no choice king back to h6 and now rook e5 third brilliant move and well this will be analysis and yeah i have to check there is queen takes we protect the rook and even if they take i'm just um checkmate or whatever so this didn't happen in the game obviously now you will ask me but dina what happens if they just take the knight oh no i'm two pieces down oh that's so bad well you know what here comes the mate knight f5 well first of all i already gained the piece back right yes and then i'll just figure it out how to mate but obviously you can see one king cannot survive yes so c5 is actually a very positional move you cut the queen and then you ask them, Mr. How are you going to protect your king? Mm -hmm. Tell me. I want to know. Knight c6 happened in the game. Here, once again, I was a little bit worried because I was like, okay, but what's next? I didn't see anything concrete after the check. So I was like, I need to go for the most logical. And the most logical was to bring another piece which did not do any decent job. And this piece was the knight. So knight f5. Boom. Nice. Check. After king g6, I expect the queen c2, and it's like honestly already looks like a disaster. In the game, it was even funny. King g5, again, hunting opponent's king. Once again, it did take me another 10 minutes to take the courage and sack the second piece. h4, boom, take my knight. Well, black has no choice. King takes f5. Now, queen d3. An interesting line here after king f4. Let's find the mate all together. Are you ready to post the video? Good, good. Let's go. Rook e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, king g3, and queen g4. Mwah! Chef's kiss. Beautiful mate with a king on g3. Okay, that did not happen in the game. My opponent sacked back the knight. Now I'm only one knight down. I mean, one bishop down or one piece down whatsoever, but mate is coming, baby. King f6. Funny thing here, Grandmaster Hammer was really trying to convince me to take on the d7, but thanks God I could not hear his commentary on Boris live to each channel. Dina did it. Dina took with the queen, and now the question is, will she take the pawn, or will she go for checkmate? And uh, both of these options are good. That's why I went for queen f4, another nice move, king g six here bunch of ideas how to make but i just wanted you know to play for harmony positional chess and ask myself which piece doesn't work mm. king h1 let's bring my rooks into the fire and cook this king h6 now here i actually had a bag rook g1 and after bishop g5 i was like bro it's a maiden three until the moment i realized i was blundering so obviously i saw this very beautiful rook g5, h takes g5, queen g5, and after king h7, I thought that queen h5 was a mate. I forgot that the king could go to g8. Actually, I didn't forget. I thought that the pawn, this is very funny, the pawn on e6 was taking control of, at the same time, f7 and g8. But, Tina, pawns are not bishops. They cannot do the diagonals so far. I mean, lucky me here first of all as i told you already in the previous video every single time when i do tactics i do not rush with the combination right even though i calculated the combination like 10 moves in advance i mean which is basically usually three or four but i still need to double check every single time because every single time you take a move it's like a fresh new position remember my russian coach told me when i was like 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 that so yeah here after bishop g5 i realized that it wasn't like made on h5 and i was like okay 
I still have a choice. I can take back the piece, but I mean, actually, <laughs> I would lose. <laughs> I cannot take back the piece, but I can check first and then take back the piece. This is funny. I need to show you. Boom! Attacking the queen and the rook. No, I'm not gonna fall for that. I didn't even see that in the game. I was just like, I'm not, I, I wanna mate. And then I saw that, in fact, even if I had to sacrifice one rook, I would still have another one. And yeah, g7, you got it. So queen g5, king h7. Here, a funny thing, I already have made in two, which would actually let my game to be finished in less than 30 moves. Unfortunately, I didn't see that, or I was nervous. I was already like five minutes on the clock, but I also saw the other mate. Queen h5, king g8, queen f7, king h7. Oh, by the way, and I was like, hmm, in the worst case, I have a perpetual. Not bad, huh? Bad. Very bad. When you're winning against the Grandmaster, you need to win. No draws. Rook g1. And no defense against the mate. Rook g8. I mean, it didn't happen in the game. It would be just queen h5, right? So in the game, my opponent resigned. He even smiled, which was very honorable from him. Rook g1. Checkmate in one move, the Grandmaster resigns and compliments Dina on the game. Amazing play from Dina. Amazing attacking play. She sacrificed her bishop. She sacrificed her knight. Then she sacrificed her rook. She sacrificed pretty much every piece she had on the board. And she takes home the win. And that concludes the saga of my four chased and hunted Grandmasters overall through my 25-year-old career. Four Grandmasters defeated. And now I only need one more to complete my, um, you know, team for Pro Chess League for chess.com. Four plus one, usually how it goes in team competitions, you know, four players and one reserved. I need a fifth Grandmaster to complete my team. Collection of beaten by Dina Belenkaya. By the way, do tell me what you think about this recap as, a, as well as for others. We still have a lot of days to go. Would you like to have my other recaps? And yeah, as always, you know, subscribe button right here.